just kind of get in the line and get marching, have fun, sing, dance, whatever you got to do. And then this megaphone is up for grabs if anybody has a real loud voice and they want to do some chants. I'll pass it around, okay? So um, here's Joy, and thank you so much for coming. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Louder? Yeah. Louder. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yesterday, when I was coming back to Pittsburgh, I cried. My girl asked me what was wrong. I said I didn't want to be here. I was coming back from the Allied Media Conference, a space full of queer people of color, beautiful queer black people. Later that evening, I learned that Kokuma, a trans sister, was missing and queer people of color across the nation were looking for her. I am a queer black mother of five. I live in Pittsburgh, traditionally First Nations land. It's sometimes affectionately heralded as the Mississippi of the North. 20 minutes outside of the city, the Confederate flag abounds. It's not okay that me and my fiance are allowed to get married, but Leon Ford Jr. cannot walk any longer. Meanwhile, a white kid was punched in the face by a cop at Pride and it has received national attention. How many of you know who Leon Ford Jr. is? This is your city. This is our city. That's right. As we march and protest, we must become deliberate in our understanding of solidarity and resistance. We must learn the histories of each other, tell the stories of each other, resist the normalization of violence, of human rights violations wherever they exist. I just came from Detroit, where 300,000 families are getting their water turned off. I live in Pittsburgh, and fracking has forced families off of their farmland not far from here. And they are talking about fracking in Braddock. In Palestine, families are forced to buy small amounts of water from Israel and catch rainwater to survive. Water is a human right, and internationally, human rights are being violated. Here in the U.S., human rights are being violated. To be human is to be political. But I don't want to just talk about that. I want to talk about the ways in, being, in which being queer, the ways in which being queer is generatively created. There is a place inside of you that is sacred, which holds the understanding of exactly the way the world should be. And there are people around you right now who also hold the knowledge of what the world should be, but in a different way. We don't resist and work for change in order for shit to stay the same. Okay? Okay? Talk about it. We resist and work for change because we have come to make this world one where we can all live in. One where there is enough for everybody. Another world is possible. Yes. I heard someone say yesterday that she doesn't think that we are ready for the win. And I thought this morning that readiness is simply a decision. We must decide that our liberation is bound up with each other. And all of our actions and our decisions and our ways of being must be about that making space for our liberation, for the liberation of ourselves and each other. The right. Pittsburgh Dyke Trans March is the making of space and it is beautiful. That's right. Woo. Yes. Woo. So, woo. look around and really take in who is here. The level of transformative genius that is here, the multitude of possibilities. I want us to really, really bear witness to that. Because it is genius to survive in this society. And it is the genius that will change the world. But I also want us to look around and see who is not here, who is not visible, what conversations are not being had, what systems of white supremacy, of patriarchy, of trans misogyny, of kyriarchy are still represented in this space. This is the work we must do and the work I will do. Because readiness is a decision and I am ready to win. Ready? Yeah. I am ready to win, to change, to create what we can all be sustained and loved and nourished in. Yes. Will you join me in the decision to be ready? Yes. Are y'all ready? Yes. Are y'all ready? Yes.
rough for an hour to fucking find.